stuck in my head all morning. That's embarrassing, I think, to say. So you've just been like singing it to yourself? I've literally kind of like just have only sang, uh oh, uh, boner alert. What? Well, that's it. On play, the play it on your computer. We'll be able to hear. Obviously. Is this a real song? Am I yeah, dumb? Is it, it is the Lonely... Um, lonely Island. Yeah, the Lonely okay, Island. Okay, okay, okay. And so, you know those guys from Saturday Night Live? Yep. Essentially. Andy Samberg and yes, his like, group. and when they used yeah. to make those funny music videos, mm-hmm. this is one with Rihanna in it. I, I forget which song, but I just looked it up on YouTube. We just add Lady to it. I know, right? Uh-oh. Um, lady Boner alert. alert. Okay, I was like, wondering how you're, you're going like, to do that. how do we? Yeah. You you're, know, we'll work on it. We'll workshop it. We'll see how it goes. You're a way better singer than me. <laughs> yeah. That's my key. That's my key okay. right there. I think we found it. I know. Yeah. So, well, hey, actually, so there's one thing I want to start off with. Okay. At the beginning of this episode. I always get scared when, when I don't know. Right? I know. Actually, what this, do you want to lead off This with? is, um, and I guess I will never apologize for who I am. Okay. But I will apologize for annoying being annoying or like irritating someone okay right okay and so um the other day i was looking at so i always look at the podcast episode yeah what number it is because i always forget right before anything's posted online to make sure i'm getting it right okay and so from time to time i'll see the reviews and this review was still really good right but it was talking about me like in depth right and you know, I hate when you read those. No, no, ahead. it's okay. No, no. And I just want to address it. So it said, I wish Tiff would work on her pronunciation of the ED at the end of words. She pronounces, which by the way, I say pronounces wrong too. Um, the sound as it making in me insane every time I listen to it. And I hear her do it like 30 times an episode. So since it's a podcast and sound is paramount, and unfortunately for me, this includes odd dictation anomalies. In this case, if I'm confusing anyone, and she gives, like, multiple examples. If I say stupid, I'll stupid. say stupid. Jared. Jared. hmm And so this is what I'll say. Um, I will never apologize for being me, but I will apologize if that's bothering you. Right. Like you, the listeners, I think I'm just as astounded that I was asked to do a podcast no joke. When Ross even mentioned it to me, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? And this is the reason why. Is while I can talk all day and, right. and have fun, when it's me and just me being me with right. you, like a girlfriend or with right. my friends, I pronounce things wrong all the time. I talk Don't we all? Su- I talk super quickly. Like, mm-hmm. I'm telling you way too fast where half the time I'm talking over myself, tripping over my words and people cannot understand yeah and i'm really loud i'm like the fucking fast and the furious when it comes to talking yeah 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 and i've always been that way now the only way that i am good at speaking because i'm great at public speaking and i'm great as an instructor is when i'm have things memorized and when i know the content and i'm like in a professional manner but at the same time you don't get tiffany's personality there right you know what I mean? You yeah, get, yeah, yeah. You get the professional Tiffany. That's what I was going to say. I'm not good if I have stuff written. Correct. Because I'll like, I'll either not be able to read it mm-hmm. because I'm actually dumb. Um, I'll just have to think it. But yeah. yeah, so you're probably better seeing it and I like can't, I'll mess it up if I do it yeah. that way. So for me, that always worked because when my mom had me in, um, I mean, she had me in a speech class, right? At one point and you were giving like speeches. I remember I did. Lincoln's four score and seven years ago. Oh my gosh, I did that one too. Right? And my mom was like, you were made for this. So that's why later on when I was, you know, was told that Sears is an instructing position, I was like, this is great. Now talking one-on-one, like just with friends and having fun, you get, this is me. Yeah. You know, and sadly, like this is me. So I will say this. I used to listen to our podcast back to use as a critiquing method, right? To see where I could grow and improve. But I started to realize that when I was doing this, I was attacking myself. Yeah. I, I think I told you not to do that. tearing myself down. Yeah. I was giving myself anxiety, like crippling anxiety. Tiffany, you can't do anything right. And so it got to the point where even if on a few episodes, I was being really self-conscious of what I said and how I said it and making sure to enunciate words correctly. Like, dude, I said Washington. I lived in Washington State. Yeah, but I think like I will say this. seven years. And I actually say it right now, but it took me literally two years to be like, 
Washington, right? Because yeah. I grew up saying things yeah. in this manner. Yeah. So while I understand the frustration of her, and by the way, it was still like a five-star review, and I appreciate the advice and the critique. At the same time, I'm kind of like, sadly, this is me. It's going to be, you know, because if you think about it and you try and change it, you're not going to be really in it. And I'm not going to really be my in the conversation. Self. Yeah. Um, I have listened to other podcasts before where I hate to say it, but people's voices, like their tone and the, other, the girls, the way the girls say certain things annoy me and I cannot listen. Right. And it's no harsh feelings on them. It's just even honestly the way they speak. I don't even like the sound of my own voice. So like I completely understand. That's why sometimes podcasting, you know, you might like the content, but you're like, man, these people, you know, and that's how yeah. it is. And so I hope I don't ruin it for anyone because I know you're fucking amazing. <laughs> They're no. like, it's great so until Tiffany like, started talking. Mine is like, I think people have said I say like too much. I say and it because quite a bit. I have that like vocal fry. It's called vocal fry if you're kind of like valley girl and mm. you say like and at the end of your sentences. So I have a well, little bit of that. People hate it. Uh, definitely heard that. It's a crutch word though. That's what we call right. it in instructing, right? right. When I just say it when I'm like in a conversation with a girl. Correct. I say like all the time and that's just like gonna happen and when you're talking and on a podcast silence is awkward which is what you do not want right right and we so, don't edit this down like nope. this is a real conversation it gets you know good bad and ugly we don't take anything out correct so with that being said sometimes if we're trying to think of what we want to say in the right manner or if we forget a word or whatever we use crutch words in between yeah people use um huh, like you know what I mean? I used yeah. to say that all the time to my students. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Oh, I say that? And For sure, I say I that I didn't realize too much, yeah. how many times I would say any of these things until I had another instructor sit in the back of my trainer, tick marking everything. Do you know how many times you said, do you know what I mean? This epi- like this uh, not episode. I was definitely not like that. But. I was like, how many? Right? Mm-hmm. But then again, so the next lesson was, okay, I want to be Tiffany, you know, Airman Zolotic, right. heart or whatever. But at the same time, I need to be cautious because I'm being an, I'm an instructor. And I don't want to be instructor, professional Tiffany on here. Like, don't no. get me wrong. There's times where I'm sure it's called for. Right. But on this, I just want to be my authentic self. And if I start overthinking things and get in my head with what I'm saying and second guess, like, what I'm about to say, then you kind of lose my personality with it. Right. And I would urge you guys, like, we actually did in an earlier episode, we talked about that. Or it was on a Drinking Bros, and Dan was, like, making fun of you. And you're like, dude, what the fuck? Like, this is how I talk, dude. (laughs) Jarrett, I think you said Jarrett. And I was, like, making fun of a little bit, too. And then I was like, oh, well, that's how she talks. There's, um, Jenna, do you know Jenna Bush Hager? She's on the Today Show. Oh, uh uh-huh. She's a bush, whatever. But she says, like, if she was going to say mountain, she says mountain and curtain or i oh you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so that kind of d thing and at first i was like that's kind of hitting me in a weird way and now it's endearing so every time she because i love her yeah so every time i hear it i'm like that's jenna Mm -hmm. that's her little thing that sets her apart and that's what you have i have many things we have no I have no problem with it so if people do then and uh, well i just wanted to address it because when i read it i was kind of like of course you're bummed because you're taking a critique about yourself. You're like, oh man, that sucks. But they're not. And I'll try to work on it. Don't get me wrong. Like sure. I am always trying to pronunciate my yeah. words correctly and say things slower. I even recall when the Air Force did, they did a recruiting video and they used me yeah. as their speaking tool. I'm like, I am the last person that you want to speak just from the heart. Yeah. Because I'll just give say me whatever. a script. Yeah. Give me a fucking script. Yeah. And even my job title. SEER, right? Yeah. It's an acronym that stands for Survival Evasion Resistance. And I always would say escape wrong. I would say ex- escape. Escape. Like Instead the of band. escape, right? Like and I still probably group. say it yeah. wrong when talking quickly. So, I mean, I'm sorry, but what you, what you see and what you hear, I guess, in this case is kind of what you get. Love it. So, you um, guys will love it too. <laughs> it's endearing. I will say this is I've always been really good. 
at writing down my words and my thoughts and articulating them through that yeah then i am more so sometimes through talking which is again why i was like you guys want me on a goddamn podcast are you sure are you sure buddy like, jesse you can't yeah. find anyone better <laughs> no i can't find anyone better 100 percent. even if i looked for a million years <laughs> no yeah so. no i mean that's what it is we're two real people we're not yeah. gonna be fucking perfect um if you want that you can hop on down to where like i don't know anywhere? anything on npr they're all scripted oh, they're are all, they? you know they're all speak they have a little bit of vocal fry but they're definitely gonna be you know a lot more put together than yeah, our like asses that but put have me fun to sleep man yeah have you know fun. what i mean like one of the best compliments i think we get from this podcast personally for me is I feel like I'm just sitting down with my girlfriends, just chit chatting with them and talking to them. Exactly. And that's what I love. And it's like, and I cool. will say that comment is kind of like something a girl would say that we were hanging out with, right? Girl. When you say da da da. Yeah. So hey, you felt like you were hanging out with us. You felt comfortable no, I appreciate, enough to yeah. say something. You can still hang if you want to. Absolutely. But, and I appreciate but just know it. know what it is. Yeah. yeah. And I do. I appreciate it. And it, I mean, it makes me more conscious of it and something I can work on. But at the same time, I'm like, well, I can't really focus on it too much because then I'm just going to change. Yeah. So. Exactly. Boner alert. <laughs> Boner alert. Perfect. Um, well, uh, we're going to stick on. I think it'll be good to hit on some like updates here at the beginning. Yeah, for sure. And then after sponsors, we can touch on a more like lighter, fun note. Yeah. Right? Because this next topic that we're going to talk about is not uh, fun. It's actually really fucking sad and heartbreaking, yeah. in all honesty. So. We're going to give you guys an update on Vanessa Gillen, and I think I'm saying her last name wrong, but uh, that's... Oh, okay. I've heard it on the news, but people keep pronouncing it the wrong way, Gillen, right? Gillen, yeah. Gillen. So, um, I don't know if you guys heard, but the other day they had found... It was literally the day after... I know, our, after ep- we did our episode. After our episode, and we were hoping that she was coming home safe Same. and giving out the numbers and stuff, and we did say we would do... Uh, an update I didn't think it would be this quick but here we go and so they did find remains near that private first class Morales which were not hers but later on they did find remains elsewhere near a waterway um and I I wonder if that gave them the kind of well place to look I don't know apparently there was ranchers nearby it was their property and they were smelling a very foul order odor and it kept continuing to get worse and so of course that's when they called uh, the police and then one of them actually got close to the smell and saw that there was what resembled to be human remains and of course like i think the night we released the episode was when they had found the remains i think or yeah. something yeah, and literally. now today they're basically they're almost confirming that it's her not officially confirming and saying it is it is but um the congresswoman and her family are, are making remarks on the issue now because they do believe that it is hers her yeah so what happened is um, the family of Vanessa Gillen believes that they identified her remains, the suspect, the, the, the number one military suspect in all of this that they believe who had a handle in this killed himself Wednesday morning. Okay. Um, okay. This morning, I guess. So the suspect killed himself. All right. And two other suspects are now in custody. Um, Congresswoman uh, Tilsey Gabbard demands congressional investigation and a third-party investigation of sexual harassment and assault. She stated that the base lied to her and that the family, uh, the base lied to her and her the family and falsely accounted for Vanessa Gillen. Um, I guess people are asking, like, what the def- Secretary of Defense can do in the meantime to help out with this, and she basically just said that while they wait for congressional action. Um, they think that she thinks that the secretary of defense should call the family, investigate Fort Hood and bring in the FBI and department of justice because she believes that the military cannot be trusted to handle this based upon their recent actions with this entire situation. Makes sense. She said sexual predators do not represent and belong in the military. And she calls on the house and the Senate to support the sweeping reform. So, um, yeah, two suspects are in custody right now. The military suspect that was the main suspect was found dead. He had killed himself. One of the suspects that's in custody right now is an estranged wife of a former Fort Hood soldier. Yeah, that one's interesting to me. Right? So in my head, I was just trying to go through scenarios of what, mm-hmm. why? Yeah. Like, what do you, hello. Um, an article. Did she knew rep- something. Correct. Yeah. 
An article report that I read the other day was that when they did find remains, they found her cell phone. Okay. And that inside of her cell phone was a... The bless you. Bo- boner alert. Sorry. Boner alert. <laughs> uh, it's just, she just sneezed, by the way. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, but inside that cell phone was apparently text messages that went out. And one of the text messages that text messages that did go out was a serial number to a firearm and they believe it was a military firearm and they're wondering and she was because she was last in the army room yeah which yeah, is yeah. where the firearms yeah, are yeah but th- so that text message went out to a recipient and they contacted that recipient and asked for their phone and their records and stuff like okay. that they believe this is what they said based upon speculation that they don't believe vanessa sent that text they believe the the main suspect did right yeah because why would she why Correct. would Vanessa? And, well, is they there... believe she was. I mean, she was disappeared. I mean, she yeah, was yeah, gone. Yeah, yeah, She was already gone at that point. And they think yeah, that yeah, she yeah. was dead. Okay. So, I mean, again, we're everyone's just working with bits and pieces, and we can grasp at straws all day. But what it seems as if is like maybe they used a weapon from the army room to commit this crime mm-hmm. because they're shot all the time and they have fingerprints all over them from right, so there's tons no, of soldiers. Yeah. Maybe they used it and they were like, "Hey, put it back." I don't even know. So, uh, dude, it, this is. I don't know. My heart breaks for this fucking family. Like, breaks so badly. Yeah. Um, and here's the thing, too. Like, we post it on our, our Broettes page. Mm-hmm. And we ask people, like, what the fuck's going on with Fort Hood, guys? Yeah. And so many people wrote in and said, like, this is just Fort Hood. There's, like, crime and drugs and criminals and stuff all around. So when a soldier goes missing, people just assume that they, like, went AWOL or was dealing with something like that and they don't do anything like even that private first class the male Morales his mother was like thank god he was found you know what I mean yeah 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 he should have been looked for the entire Mm -hmm. time instead of just being like oh yeah the guy deserved it he went AWOL so that sounds like a little bit of the mentality of the military there where they're no, just like it's pretty it, it seems like it's just there i gotta be yeah, honest no because, just there yeah, that's what i mean Fort they're like it's, oh, it's shitty out here there's drug dealers or whatever it's a it's what a, a terrible mentality right it's i'm a shitty you place right now. if somebody goes a wall whatever if they're missing an important piece of equipment that's like thousands of dollars they will literally shut down the entire base they'll make everyone stay on base yeah. inside their fucking barracks or their team rooms or their units yeah and they won't let anyone leave until they find that fucking piece of equipment i've seen that happen before so why are they not doing this with human fucking beings jesse you, you know? know i don't you know i don't know girl. no i know it's just yeah, we're um but here's the thing too so um due to the lack of answers safety respect and responsibility in fort hood again they're demanding a congressional investigation to be done the people keep people keep asking how can someone be sexually harassed on base go missing on base and the family has not obtained any answers in two months and so i guess sadly the criminal investigation department of the army did not decide to put in an investigation for the sexual assault until june 19th like she's been and missing she, since april 22nd yeah it can't like you know what i mean it's mm-hmm. kind of like why did you wait so yeah. damn long yeah yeah for this to happen i don't know there's a lot of like there's just a lot of questions with this this is going to be an ongoing investigation I that i think is going to go down hopefully go down some winding roads and not be cut off yeah with higher ups like i just hope that there is some kind of outside real outside investigation that has nobody in their pocket do you know what i mean yes that they can actually figure it out because sadly this seems like something that someone can shut down in the right i know in the right i think um, that's why they're trying to get the fbi and department of justice involved because the more bigger departments that you have in the less things are just going to get lost or yeah. forgotten about. And there's got to be. And the good old boy system or whatever right. the fuck's going on of sneaking right. things behind. Someone even said, too, that they have, like, very high security at Fort Hood. Extremely high because of all the crime around it. Like, literally right outside of base. Which, sadly, a lot of bases are built on very cheap property. So the area around it is extremely poor right. and crime-ridden. Right. Uh, but I guess it's just literally right outside their base gate. They have to have high security because of that. Supposedly, and this is again like people talking, that security and the base security did not, no one was manning it 
during a time she was lost, like mm. went missing that it's day. Very Epstein. So they, they didn't have. Very Ep- Epstein. Yeah. Like, very we just went on a break for that one 10 minutes that you killed yourself kind of thing. Um, or that you went missing. Yeah. All of a sudden. Yeah. So. Um, well, I think the biggest red flag is the main suspect just killed himself. Killed himself. I'll say so this we can right kind of start there, I feel like, right? As far as your investigation. Right. I mean, if that doesn't show fucking guilt. You know what bothers me? I was thinking about this on the way here. What a fucking easy way to take it. Take, your, take yourself out. Are you fucking kidding you me? You hate to see that because you're like, I wanted to hear. W- this family wanted answers. Like, how the fuck you, dude? Because like, you clearly had them. If you're killing yourself like this, you clearly had the answers that could have put this family... If this is if this is the case that this person who killed himself sexually harassed, sexually assaulted, and killed Vanessa, man, that person deserves to rot in fucking jail for the rest of their fucking life. Absolutely, and think daily about their actions and what they did, and fucking suffer for it. Like, but I'm more sorry. importantly, be investigated. Yes, like and, and, and closure and for the family, interrogated and, and confess, and like and you know give what answers. too, and also maybe like prove and show that there's problems in the military and highlight this so we can make a fucking change like there's so much and i still think this is going to happen from this but it's still like it just kind of got me mad for a second right i mean just as basic human emotions speaking very frankly i was just like fuck you dude like what a fucking you're gonna fucking kill yourself what a fucking loser dude and so you know what i mean uh yeah I mean, that's not something you can be like, oh, they're depressed or whatever. No. No, they fucking couldn't handle what was about to happen. And I'm saying if, I, again, it's speculation, but I'm saying if they, uh, they were the ones who assaulted and killed her and stuff, like, you, man, you need to live with that fucking guilt. Stop taking the damn easy way out. If you didn't, why are you killing yourself Correct. as the police are closing in on you? That's I know. pretty much what super guilty people do, but I'm just saying. But I yeah. Know. So they, my heart, we, my heart goes out to her family. Like, oh my God. I, I think in anyone's family's mind in the back of their head they of course had to have thoughts of she's probably not going to be alive by the time we find her yeah right i mean at a at a certain point very rare unless you're amanda berry or something that has been kept in a basement for 10 years most of the time it doesn't happen yeah like even me like if one of my sisters went missing like realistically i'd be like she's probably dead but of course there's like this underlying hope and it's still soul crushing to think about, right? And then when you put yourself on other people's shoes, you're like, damn. Like, this was my sister, my family. Like, mm-hmm. th- that's really hard. Yeah. So, essentially, right now, um, they're expected to propose le- legislation to protect US military members from sexual assault and sexual harassment. They said our soldiers deserve to be safe and respected while being on duty. These soldiers are putting, and by the way, soldiers is like for everyone, airmen, Marines, Mm. seamen, anyone, Mm -hmm. are putting their life on the line for the United States. Yet the same Army family fails to respect them mentally, physically, or sexually. So it says any soldiers who have experienced abuse are encouraged to share their story, right? And it's like I've actually dealt with something similar not i've dealt with sexual harassment and i've always wanted to like i guess with my platform on social media Mm -hmm. i wanted to share that but i didn't know how in the right way or the right time right and if you allow me i want to share a little bit right now yeah um i wrote stuff down god damn it i'm gonna cry (laughs) i don't want to cry so i'm I'm gonna try not to but i really believe and having a voice and speaking up. And sadly, I feel like the situation has really like hit me. Yeah. And affected me in a way. Um, because at any point in time, I feel like anyone could be in Vanessa's shoes and it could be taken to that extreme. And God, I fucking hope not. Yeah. And so I think it's, I think when there's a time to use your voice, we can. In this situation, I'm going to. So. Um, God, okay. Go on, girl. I know. You good. People have tried to silence me my whole career. I was expected to put up with things that I should have never endured because it was just how things went. I was extremely young when I first joined the military, 
And while I didn't often take people's shit before, this was a whole other beast I wasn't prepared for. The first crude statement I received was less than two months in by an individual who was in charge of me. As I looked up in shock from the words, his response was, what? You didn't like that? You're going to call EO? You're going to deal with this shit your entire career. And it was in that moment that I saw behavior such as this that would be normalized and justified to explain actions against me that should never have happened. As time went on, things progressively got worse, and out of fear, I stayed silent. I was wrong for that. I should have said something, but I did not. And I was ashamed and still ashamed of myself. After receiving a death threat from an individual I worked with, I finally decided to speak up for myself. The supervisor I talked to told me, oh, this is just boys being boys. They never worked with a girl before, so they don't even know how to act. I'm barely certain this information stopped at him and was forgotten about, as nothing came of it, but the hate and harassment from this individual continued. As time went on, I completely lost myself. I was just trying to survive at this point, and I thought to make it, I had to do things I was not okay with. So I stayed silent to not cause any issues because guys feared working with females since, you know, we always cause unnecessary drama. I let the sexism, bullying, and harassment continue, and I just tried as hard as I could to be one of the guys so I could be accepted. Anytime I could, I would drink myself to the point where I would forget all the pain. I hated my life and who I was becoming just to appease those around me. Then the day came where enough was enough and things were taken way too far and I finally, finally took a stand for myself in fear of my well-being. This was a moment that silence would scar me forever and I wasn't going to let that happen. I finally found my voice and respect for myself. While I was still fearful of breaking my silence, I realized in that moment I'd rather be hated for sticking up for myself rather than hating myself for all I was about to endure. As you can imagine, I was crucified for not putting up with something that no one should have to put up with. If I thought life was hell before, God, I was wrong because this was it. The finger of blame fell on me because of my gender. It was said a woman couldn't handle this job, and to them I was giving them proof of just that. No, 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 no. This is just some bullshit justification to treat women like scum because it was easier to blame things on just one person rather than to realize there was a bigger issue at play here. To them, it's a man's world, and if I wanted to work alongside them, I had to deal with all the shit they threw at me, and that even meant sexual harassment. Initially, I truly believe this is what I had to put up with for my whole career. I love this job so much, and I put all of myself into it, but at the same time, I had lost myself. I had lost my voice. I had lost my respect. I didn't even know who I was anymore. I'm telling you right now, this is one of the hardest things I had to do in my life was stick up for myself when I was sexually harassed. It's so damn sad to me that an environment that I was in, it was made so much easier to stay quiet rather than speaking up because I knew if I said anything that my whole world would be destroyed. And I was sadly was right. But in this destruction, I found myself once again it was so hard to endure all the hate, blame, slander, and alienation by my colleagues, but I'm telling you right now, it was so fucking worth it. You are worth it. You are. You should never have to endure this ever, and I hate to say it, but it only can be addressed and stopped if we say something. We have a voice. I know how often it's attempted to be silenced, but we really need to speak up. If not just for yourself, for those before you and for those after you. While I may not have dealt, while I may have dealt with pure hell, major problems were highlighted and slowly things did change. Which thank goodness, because the woman who came after me did not have to deal with anything that I had to. And honestly, it made all the hell worth it. So if you're feeling afraid, I understand you. If you think no one, no one will believe you, I understand you. If you feel like it would make things worse to say something, I absolutely understand you. And while there may be chaos once you speak up and you feel like you can't even see the light at the end of the tunnel, I promise you it's there. 
Just keep hanging on. I promise things get better. They really do. I am so sorry if you're hearing this and you know exactly what I'm speaking about. I am so sorry you had to endure this in your life. That's why we need to use our voice. That's why we need to speak up. So that no other women around us have to endure such things. So that our sisters can work in a safe environment. So that our daughters can see a true example of what strength is, but hoping that they never have to experience it. We can make a change. We can erase our, we cannot erase our past, but we can heal our pain and prevent other women from feeling this pain as well. Yeah, girl. Yes! So, sorry, I had to say something. Sorry, that's not a like, yes, I'm glad that happened. That's a, so when we first started the podcast, I remember you saying that like, you just didn't want, like, you can talk about whatever, but they're just like, you don't really want to get into the sexual harassment in the military. Mm Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay. And um, I do feel like this, what happened to this woman, Vanessa, apparently has like broken something open because you were like, I don't want to talk about that. Don't want to touch on it. I was afraid to be, I was afraid people were going to come after me still. Um, And now it's like, it doesn't matter if they do or not. You need to talk about it. Or I still lived in the fear. Like, even though I was brave in that situation, you still, still never li- know, yeah. I still live in the fear of bringing it up again and opening Pandora's box and having people, especially on social media who don't even fucking know me, be like, you deserved it. Or What'd you, you asked do? for it. Yeah. You probably you were a yourself- slut. You, oh, you didn't speak up right away. It's your fucking fault. Any, like everything that you hear. Why didn't you say anything? Mm-hmm. Why, Why does it take you so it? long? Yeah. Correct. And so I don't think I was ready for that. I honestly don't think anyone's honestly ready for that. No. Um, but I think I realized more and more, and I've, when I've heard other people tell their stories, I just thought to myself, fuck, you were brave. And I wish I could, and I wish I could be brave. Yeah. Because honestly, like we've talked about before, when women speak on these situations, look how many other women come forward. Just with like Jeff- Jeffrey Epstein or, you know, Weinstein, Harvey Weinstein or, yeah. or any of these guys. When one woman's strength was able to propel her forward into being like, no, enough is enough. I'm not fucking dealing with this shit. Look how many other women were like, oh, my God, you're giving me hope. Like, I mean, we're in this together. Like, yes, let's come forward. Yeah. And so I think because of the strength of those who spoken out before me. I was like, you know what? Um, I have people who look up to me and I have people who like this, you know, even the other day, this mom, um, has been reaching out to me. Her daughter is in boot camp right now. And Mm -hmm. she was just telling me how much her daughter looks up to me and she joined the military and was inspired by me. And it's like, sometimes you don't realize the grad, the gravity of that situation Mm -hmm. and how much you can affect people just by being honest and being yourself or like being open about things. And I wrote this girl a letter from boot camp. Like, she's yeah, in boot yeah. camp right now. And I even think to myself, like, I feel like I'm doing not just myself, but other people a disservice if I was to stay silent. Yeah. On this. And I just, yeah, I figured it was a time to say something. Because with Vanessa and just a lot of multitude of things, honestly, over the last three years building. Yeah. Ironically, last night I watched this um, documentary called Roll Red Roll, which is about this little football town in Ohio where there was like pe- these girls were getting raped by mm-hmm. this football team. And they just were like, they were always protected because they were like the biggest thing in town and whatever. Yeah. And finally, one girl had come, you know, had come forward and prosecuted and like had tapes and all this stuff. And First, everyone was like, oh, that, you know, what, that was her fault. She was drinking at this party. She wanted to date this guy. She wanted to hang out with the football team. Sorry. And then slowly it turned into, you know, a protest of women in front of the courthouse, like sticking up for this girl. And there was one woman that she was older, but she was like, I don't know what she was just there to like hold her sign and like be supportive. And she was like, I don't know what came over me there was other people talking on the podium and she was like I just started walking towards and like went through the group I had never I didn't even know what I was gonna say and once she got up there just started 
crying and talking about what had happened to her in mm-hmm. the same way because it is literally rape culture in this small little town mm-hmm. it's different now but at the time it was like you just like they did that to you and you better stay silent because they're gonna protect the football players yeah. because that's their main thing and that idea and i actually thought about you is like that idea of her just like not even knowing why but just being like this something that happened with this girl at this time right now broke something open and it takes that right because like i said in the beginning you were just like i just really don't want to talk about that i can't i'm still in whatever it is and you're just like i can't and it had to take something that hit you in the right way at the right time to be like i don't even know what i'm doing i don't even know what the repercussions are but i have to say it and um kind of crazy like to, to watch and see and like um yeah and even like just you getting emotional about it it's it's very it brings it's me back very to, strong like it brings me back i mean i just see i fucking hate it myself yeah you know um like you know because guys, of how they made you feel everything. or because you couldn't yeah all of it because of like what i was okay with what you're okay with yeah and i'm not saying that i sat there and was like yeah i'm cool with it no, but the fact that I just yeah. didn't stick up. Yeah. The fact that it, and the things that, and the times that I did want to say something, I was just like, oh, don't, you're going to cause issues. Or the times I even did say something, but it wasn't as strong, like mm-hmm. in your fucking face, like, shut the fuck up. You don't say that shit to me mm-hmm. or whatever. Like, yeah. excuse me, would you talk to your mom that way? Even just like, hey guys, I don't know. This is like appropriate conversation right now. Oh, you're fucking fine. You're like one yeah, of the dudes yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Right. Just everything always is talked down. You know, unfortunately, what, three years of just dealing with it? Yeah. Ate at me alive. And it got, I mean, I was fucking wasted all the time. Any moment that I could be, like, all my buddies saw, I was, I mean, I was a blast. Don't get me wrong. But there was times where I would just drink myself to oblivion in my fucking room and hated who I was because of dealing with it. Yeah. And I would go out and drink and have fun and I wouldn't even do a single thing and hang out with the same buddies. And there would start the rumors the next morning of like me sleeping with everyone or mm-hmm. all this other stuff. And then mm-hmm. the same <clears throat> the same guys harassing me being like, you look really hot that night. You're lucky I didn't take you home and fuck you. And You know what I mean? Like just being like, excuse me. And thank God for such good friends who made sure any single time that if I did drink to my myself too much to the point to where I could not I would could not consciously take care of myself and was safe that my my like buddies would Mm -hmm. right they would never right they mean even at the very beginning when I first joined and we were still in seer training becoming seer instructors there was a few instructors who were there for like upgrade training Mm -hmm. and like one of them was drinking at the he was drinking at our bar which is like a student bar and a seer trainer Mm -hmm. training bar which like instructors don't go to they're told to stay away from it right because you stay away from students and seer trainees and they came they came and they're one of them was really drunk and he kept trying to hit on me and uh, and thank god all my buddies were there because they saw it and they saw me trying to be like nice about pushing him away Mm -hmm. but they were they even got in his face and was like dude calm the fuck down yeah he ended up coming into our dorm room yeah and like busting open doors and trying to find me thank god we were all like we all were hanging out in like the day room yeah you know what i mean but like the guys like were freaking out they were pissed yeah because they saw this like fucking firsthand what i had what i deal with like all the fucking time yeah and um thank god they had put in like a thirty thousand dollar camera system before i came up Mm -hmm. i was like one of the first girls to graduate in eight years so they were at least looking to protect me yeah and um I went in, I remember I remember I went into my room after we were all hanging out in the day room and those guys left because they were drunk and we told them to get out of there. And I went into my room, my underwear drawer was open and there was a Red Bull can sitting in my room with uh, like that smelled like alcohol. And mm-hmm. I was like and I called up my buddy John like on the, like I texted him. I was like, dude, I'm pretty sure this guy was in my fucking room. Yeah. And guess what? I had no plans to say a single fucking thing. Right. Mm hmm. Who are they going to believe? A fucking seer girl in training? Right. A, a wannabe who's like nothing? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Who yeah. probably already has like the reputation of a whore. Right. Because I'm a girl going through, we're training with all guys. Or are they going to believe actual seer instructors who've been in the career yeah, field yeah, for yeah. a very long time who are high ranking? Mm-hmm. So I didn't say a single thing. Well, 
this just goes to show, and by the way, just because I was harassed and had to deal with sexism and bullying from some guys does not mean all of them are bad. Yeah, yeah. Majority of them were great, but it was a select, it was the few that made my life hell. Mm-hmm. These guys went to the cadre the next morning and were like, dude, they were banging on our fucking doors. They were harassing Tiff. Mm-hmm. They were in her room. Like, and the cadre came up to me and were like, did this happen? And I even still said no. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I was so fearful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were like, Tiffany. And I was like, I'm afraid to say something. And then, and that was at least one kind of glimmer of hope. But I was still, right. you know, from the very get-go, I dealt with a, and then one of my instructors when I first went through training in Texas giving me shit yeah. and harassing me and telling me I was going to deal with it my whole career. So mm-hmm. that's what filled my mind. I yeah. just wanted to make it through. I wasn't trying to cause problems. Yeah, yeah. And to me, speaking up caused problems. Right. So just get to the end. Right. Deal with it so, later. Yeah. The guys all rallied around, like my other teammates, and they were like, we're going to write a police report up. And they all wrote their own version, like in the police report. Mm-hmm. And because of they, because they did, I was like, I will, you know, I will too. Yeah. My commander, thank God I had such great leadership at this time. And I wish that I could have kept them with my whole career, but unfortunately you can't. Yeah. They called me up and they were like, we want you to press charges. And I was like, no. no. And this guy had a wife and he had kids. Yeah. And it was like the last thing that I wanted to do, but they wanted to crucify him. Mm-hmm. That did, at least in that moment, made me feel protected. Right. But it changed once I changed squadrons. It changed yeah. once I had different leadership. It mm-hmm. changed once I was a small dog in the big dog world with all the... Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So while I do talk about one example of something bad, or I can talk about multiple examples of something bad, they are still good. I'm not saying the military and what I dealt with my entire career was a toxic environment at all points in time. It was not. There was good times a lot of good times and there's a lot of really great stand-up guys who did stand up for me or who like her hearts were hurt when they heard what i went through Mm -hmm. but there's also some fucking scumbags who will try to get away with whatever the fuck they can right and sometimes those guys are the ones who weasel their way into the good old boy system and can just get away with shit yeah and it makes me fearful and i think it's good to speak up and talk about these things as scared as you are of what people are going to say and the repercussions and I sometimes live my life in fear of what people might say. I do. I'm fucking human. And sometimes I wish I didn't care, but I do. But in this case, I appreciate you letting me speak on that. I mean. And say that. Yeah, I think there's. And using this podcast. I think that every girl that's listening, whether they're in the military or not, like, feels that. And there may be some guys that are like, there's no way that, like, those guys talk like that like only women really Mm. know yeah that that's how gross and that's how aggressive and that's how um power hungry some guys can go like Mm -hmm. because the people listening the guys listening are good guys right so they're they're like there's no way there's no way right there's always a way and the only thing i can speak on is like you know from like working at bars or restaurants or even a salon i worked at a salon with a guy owner like And, you know, and I've been, you know, in movies with guy directors, guy actors, like all this. So in in a certain way, have dealt with that, too. But there's not the I feel like in the military, it's just a little bit more scary, clearly, with the story that we told before yours. Like it can be quite scary. And the investigation is internal. So. It is scary. You know what I mean? Like, because here's the thing you're not too. going to the cops. You're going to the fucking cops that are, you know that, what I mean? That are in the your people. service. Yeah, yeah. The, the same people. The minute you join the military, everything's hammered into your head to obey, obey, obey. Yeah, There's yeah. a chain of command for a reason. Yeah, yeah. And you were at the very fucking bottom. Right. You are nothing. You listen to everyone. Right. right. It isn't really until I went through SEER training and we went through our interrogation portion, right, that we learned about the UCMJ and the, our code of conduct as a prisoner mm-hmm. and you learn that if you are held captive and you have a higher up who's telling you to do shit that you know is wrong yeah to go against them mm-hmm. and that's only in like a captivity environment if right. you're like hostage peacetime or like uh wartime sure and that's the only time you really hear of like possibly disobeying or going against the orders of those appointed over you. Mm-hmm. If it's like a war crime or they're telling you to do something yeah. fucked up, you don't ever like, hear about it in yeah. your military career. And so in this aspect, it kind of gets drilled in your head and you become just so conformed to like 
okay, like, I guess this has happened. I guess this is normal. Like, mm-hmm. I guess I'll just won't say anything, I guess. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem too sometimes is like in a real world situation outside of the military where we feel as if like, we'd be like, boy, who the fuck, what to get the fuck right. off of me, right? right? Or like, you don't say that to me. Right. You can't say that in a military environment because that's disrespecting, right? Your, right. So and above you can get in trouble. Yeah. So it's kind of like either say something or you don't mm-hmm. or, right? And then yeah. it sometimes just snowballs or it just, people get in power hungry positions. Yeah. And they're, they could already have issues and be predators. Right. And the minute that they, think that no they're untouchable and it could be guys or fucking girls yeah i speak from my experience where i was obviously i'm obviously a female and dealt with males but i'm telling you like i'm i know and hear that males deal with it too from other males or females vice versa and yeah it is scary because your brotherhood your sisterhood it's like a big family and you really depend on each other a lot and sometimes you're in close quarters like for example vanessa she was walked in when she was showering by that supervisor, mm-hmm. just acting like it was nothing, you know? And, like, when does that happen at work? Like, never, never. for really anyone. Yeah. But in a military environment, mm-hmm. you know, you're in different quarters. Like, for example, when I used to always be out in the khakis outside in the woods with the guys, which is these massive, huge tents, we'd all sleep in a big bay area. Right. So if I ever wanted to change... And we would only stay in those during the winter, by the way. Mm-hmm. So it's freezing outside. Yeah. So either I'd go outside and freeze my ass off and change in the snow. Or all the guys would be like in the kitchen. I'd be like, hey, guys, I'm changing. Don't come in here. And then you can hear all of those like comments. No, and actually, <laughs> they were always good. And so th- that they worked with me a lot of times. They would be like, they would be in that bay and they'd be like, hey, Tiff, balls out. And I was like, got it. <laughs> oh, Ain't got looking it. Good. Yeah. Right. And we had to kind of, while it was still kind of awkward sometimes for people, and people don't like when things are uncomfortable. It's just what you dealt with, deal, mm-hmm. you know, with the genders. But, you know, if I would be changing, they'd be like, boobs out. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I don't really got any, but yeah, okay. But here we go. But that's what you dealt with. And it was fine. That's fine. Right. But that was respect. Yeah. And what you dealt with. So, I don't know. I, yeah, I couldn't even tell you why, but it was just on my heart. And even the other day when we were talking about it Monday, I just was like, it hit me. You even called me up after the episode. Yeah. And just were kind of like, are you okay? Like, are you right? And I think it's a lot of life, but this situation and just hearing about this and then seeing like probably the worst case scenario that can happen from it. Right? Yeah. Death. Yeah. Disappearance leading to murder. Yeah. It's, it just awoken something in me to feel the need to share it because maybe if I can share my story, it can help others who've dealt with the same thing or maybe... It can help others speak up in situations where they deal with this and prevent stuff like this from happening. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We should never have to deal with it. And I'm not saying that us not speaking up means we deserve it. We never say that ever. But I'm yeah. just saying the only way people know about this and the only time like people can change or leadership would know and make changes and correct the environment is by us using our voice. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. It's like the same thing in relationships. Your spouse doesn't know what the issue is unless you, until you let unless them know. You, yeah. So in this case, it's the same thing. Yeah. So I just felt the need to use my voice. Love it. I hate crying. Ugh. I, <laughs> you do? I hate. Yeah. That's why I could have like, I was Ugh. trying to hold it in the whole time. I hate crying. <laughs> I love it. Just a good cry. And lately. Get it, get it out. Get it over. Lately, I've been feeling like, you, do you ever have this feeling like, you need to cry, but it's for no reason. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I was talking to my husband about it last night. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I sat down, ate some food. I was watching, because that's the only time I get to watch any show. I was watching, what the fuck was it? America's Got Talent. <laughs> and it wasn't even like a sad story, but I oh was Oh my like, gosh. America's Got Talent they, will make you. I they mean, make you cry. The heart They strings, make you cry. Yeah, with everything. The slow motion when they win and the fucking confetti coming yeah. down and there was a few times where they just even introduced to people it was like a funny story right and i was just like why do i whoa yeah, whoa yeah, yeah. calm it down yeah, girl yeah. why do you feel the need yeah. to like cry and then one of the guys did it i was like this is so beautiful oh my gosh <laughs> while eating my food and I, got, I don't really have those moments often it's like every five years but when i do it's like fuck and now it's i'm having important. it with you all yeah so welcome to my to my breakdown to my breakdown yeah no i, I was mean, about to say I think welcome to the breakdown <laughs> yeah um it's important it's important to 
break break down every once in a while because holding it in pushing it deep down inside yeah it's what i do too it yeah. comes out in weird ways it does. and it doesn't necessarily come out in crying ways sometimes it it'll comes come out, out in like anger or like frustration when it's just like dude you just need to sit on your fucking bed and cry listen to sad music so that you don't that be fucking a fucking playlist. you yeah. know so i don't a be lot a, like, of times, bitch to my husband or something correct a lot of times i realize that when i do push down those emotions it comes out in toxic ways that affects other people around me right, right? Yeah, like for sure you know it's a my husband is like getting the brunt of the frustration when in fact it's not even close to him. Right. Right. And then he's they frustrated do, because they do it with us too though. Oh, absolutely. I'm always like, I mean, we all the do lucky it. lady. <laughs> and he's all stressed out about something. I'll be like, I'm at home. Just the lucky lady about to get some shit when you get home about nothing. Right. You need to start saying that. You're the lucky lady. Yeah. Or if you're going to take it, or if I, if I take it out of him, I'm like, guess who's the lucky guy? guy. You get all my shit right now because yeah. I'm pissed at this and this and this, so I'm going to be weird to you. You know what I've but, done before, which is kind of sad, is that there are times where I know I'm stressed about a lot of things and it's nothing to do with Chris. And I'm like, listen, I was like, I just have a lot going on right yeah. now. And I know I'm taking it out on you. Same. And I actually admit that I'm taking it out on him or about to and then I take it out on him yes <laughs> but I will say that was a huge growth thing for my relationship because we've finally identified that so mm -hmm. like he'll even say now like dude he knows it's not you I'm oh. stressed about something else I know I'm taking it out on you I know I'm snapping I'm knowing whatever but like that's a huge growth for us like we're still gonna do it Same. but identifying it so is the most it that you can do personally personally they're so I'm realizing like, okay, it's not a dumb issue yeah. It's a you issue yeah. and, and all they can do is just be there for you. Yeah. Yeah. So, and like, I'm still going to be like bitchy at you for no reason. <laughs> and I'm going to be talking about like stuff that doesn't even make sense that I'm pissed about. The main thing that I do is like, I will like stomp around the house cleaning and I'll be like, and then I'll start yelling at the kids to like, put, put your shoes. I'm the only one that fucking cleans up around here. Yeah. I'm not your mom too. That's my main thing is like, I'm not your mom too. I'm their mom. And then he knows that something else is going on because I don't even usually clean. So if I'm stomping around cleaning, <laughs> being like, I'm the only one that cleans, yeah. he'll be like, when? Uh, Do you know what I yeah. mean? Like, are you really? Or are you doing it right now? Like, yeah. I get it. But, you know, there's certain little tells. I'm sure your husband, like, if he says a certain thing, you're like, that's not about me. Correct. That's about something else. Yes. And, and that's the one thing too, that you go to. That I know. Well, I know that if he, he ever brings up his, uh, the situation with his daughter and his ex-wife, right? Or anything that has to do, like, because he, the only time he talks about it is when it's gotten really bad. Exactly. And it's really wearing down on him as much as, he, you know, he's trying to just be part of her life and his ex-wife right. won't let him. Right. It's so fucking sad. And so I know that when he starts talking about it, I have, like, sometimes when he starts to get more and more intense, I'm like, hey, I love you. I'm here for you. Don't take it. Don't start. Take it out on me. Right. Right. You know, and I, I, but I have, I realize that. Yeah. So it's like, okay, here it comes. Yeah. But it's okay. Yeah. So um, when my husband starts going, he'll, <laughs> I keep like the bills kind of in a, you know, they're organized, but they're sort of in the corner of like bills that I need to pay now or whatever. Yep. Like paper. Why are we getting paper bills That's what anymore? I wonder too. Hello? I am so shocked. Send me a fucking email and I will pay it. Correct. Why are you sending me fucking paper I bills? I am so shocked every time I go to the damn like mailbox and I have letters in there and I'm like, did I not sign up electronically for this? Why am I keep, why do I keep having mail? But you have my email. <laughs> like all these places have my email. Send oh, me a real you quick, probably five emails a day. A link to pay you and I will absolutely do it. If you send me a fucking letter and I put it in this place that I'm talking about, I'm probably not going to pay it. And maybe that's what you want because you want lay fees and stuff. Probably. So when he was, I know when he is like going through something, he'll like come home, start looking through them. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Kind of like, what, uh, what? And I'm like, dude, here we go. Down. <laughs> but it's about something totally different. But that's his go to is like, yeah. go to the bills in the corner. Because there's and see something. Something. There's something, something I can yell about, right? About. What didn't you pay? And then he's able <laughs> to like, yell. Why did you show me this? Why is this in the file? Yeah. Because he wants to just come home and yell. He can't do that because it's not my fault. So he needs to find something that's my fault. So now we can have a fight about it. Yeah. And I do the same thing. I do the exact same thing. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying it's just him. Like, oh, I do I'll too. do it too. I'll wait for him to do something shitty so I can really have a big fight because I need to get it out. And what I really should be doing is sitting on my bed and crying. But, you know. Correct. Hey. You know what's so sad? We live and learn. When I was younger, I wanted so badly to get mail every day like my parents. And I um, had fake you credit did? cards. 
Oh, oh my god, I was so yeah. jealous. I recall being homeschooled and my mom and going to my mom like, "Why do I get mail?" And she's like, "Don't worry, when you grow up, you'll get it all the time. You'll get it all, and you'll." And I would it. get so excited, and sometimes she would have just like my aunts and uncles write me just so I have a letter or like a cousin or something. And I would play with fake credit cards. Now as an adult, I'm like, "Oh my god, Dude, what the fuck is right? This Why did I wish my this?" Life. <laughs> Now all I want is emails. Just send me a fucking email with a link and I'll pay you, dude. Anyways. We can get um, on to the sponsors. Yeah, let's get to some sponsors and then I guess we're going to get to some a little bit of lighthearted stuff. To Yeah, um, it's so... Well, I mean, it is lighthearted, but we're talking about you leaving. I know. Well, we're going to have fun tonight. Yeah, We'll talk about that. Yeah, girl. (laughs) All right, first up, as always, we have Ghost Bed dot com forward slash drinking bros of course ghost bed we love all of the humans in the studio and everywhere sleep on ghost beds we love them you got the lux right I did. so i'm trading in for the lux because you love it so much With the cooling top layer. gotta get the whole cooling so right now they're doing 25 percent off plus two free pillows and they're also doing 30 percent off a bundle package um they always have great deals they really do. I think this is going to be going through July 4th. So get oh. on it. This is one of the best deals that they have. And they're just for our listeners uh, in the Drinking Bros Network. So go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Get your, get your comfy cozy on. Next up, we have strikeforceenergy.com. I think I'm going to be using them tonight. I think we're going to have to. Because, I actually okay. need one right now. So for example, I did like I we have some of these. Which okay. is like this energy drink. It's okay, but it makes me jittery where Strike Force does not. Strike Force By the it. way, you can never use these energy drinks or anything like this. Don't ever use it to drink with because you will get terribly sick because of all the extra junk that's in it. Strike Force does not have that junk. It's yeah. So you're just like, adding the very energy. very clean energy. To, that's why you won't get sick. Yeah. You're just adding the energy, a little, little packet of liquid energy mm-hmm. to whatever drink you have. So it can be water, LaCroix. White Claw, Truly, Vodka Soda, it whatever it a you're good feeling. Flavor too to it. You know what I flavor, mean? Flavor, uh, sugar free, uh, gluten free, calorie free. It's a it's a girl's best friend. Well, and guys, it's really shit. great. It's your waist. It's your waistline's best friend, and it will keep you going all night long. Mm-hmm. Go to strikeforceenergy.com promo code ladyboner for twenty percent off yeah. everything in the store. Next up, we've Bone got alert. a dude. Play it. <laughs> oh, <hold on. laughs> oh shit! Do you not have it? No, I can I put do. it in the I audio. <laughs> Boner alert! We literally have. Uh oh. Uh oh. Boner alert! We literally have a boner alert. We do. Uh, we, we have do. get Roman. Woo! We have GetRoman.com as a sponsor. Go to GetRoman.com slash Broettes, first of all. But um, we've talked about Roman on this show before mm-hmm. and then all the other Drinking Bros shows as well. So this is um, Roman in general is a place where guys can go to get any kind of a little extra boost, a little pep in your a step. A little boost, but you can also talk to a doctor mm-hmm. distri- discreetly online about any like erectile dysfunction, any issues that you're having. It doesn't have to be, you know, completely not working. You want to last longer. You want to get it up in general. Whatever it is, you yeah. talk to the doctor. You get a pre- you can get a prescription, and it can show up at your house discreetly. Or you can get other products. This newest product that they have amazing. is amazing right it's called roman swipes so smart so think about this think about keeping a little like wet wipe in your mm-hmm. back pocket hanging out with the girl by the way no one's to. ever gonna bat an eye at like a little wet wipe no they're ever. gonna be like you go to the bathroom really quick do 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 you wipe the the roman swipe on your stuff uh and you will last longer um it's discreet it's unmarked pas- packaging it's small enough to hide in your wallet. Um, it doesn't transfer to your partner. You can last longer. Yeah, you can last longer without worrying, and it's fast acting. I'm going to tell you right now, if I was fucking a dude, and he takes out a little wet wipe, let's say if he even does it in front of me. Right. He I'll takes out like, wet oh my wipe gosh, you clean it? And cleans his, like, what it looks like to me, cleaning his dick, I'd be like, it is on. I'm going to be like, love I'm this. Do everything to that. Love this for cool. you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like that's all it, it will looks make like. you instead of popping the pill, which I feel like 
if you do it in front of someone, it could be a little bit more obvious. Yeah, and it doesn't right act. Sex. It's not as fast acting. So you have to like take is- the pill and then anticipate that you're maybe going to do something. Yeah. Um, this is immediate right here. This with is the immediate. Wipes. And it's just one of the products that they have at GetRoman.com slash Broettes. You're going to get $10 off and free two-day shipping for whatever you end up ordering. While you're there, you know, chat with the doctor. If you got anything else going on, you have any questions, um, so you don't have to, like, go into the doctor's office and be like, hey, can you look at my dick? Like, tell me what's going on. Um, By the way, there's no shame in any of this. No, Because us women, a lot of times, too, talk about, like, Hey, I'm like just like not feeling it lately. I just can't get turned yes. on. We even talk about whether if we're like too dry down there or if we're like squirt. Like we talk about stuff all the time. There's no shame in it because it's a human body and that's natural. Mm-hmm. There's gonna be situations and issues, and it's not always gonna be working perfectly all the time. Yeah. And in order, like if you can get help like this, whether you want to do it discreetly, whether you want to do it obviously, if you want to tell your partner or not, like, you know, if they're like a good person, which they should be, if you're with them. They're going to completely understand. Yeah. And not honestly care either way. No. As long as like, they're going to be happy that you're trying. Correct, right? Like, to last longer. Oh, like, my God. Yeah. She's probably cool with however long you're lasting. But Correct. shit, lasting a little longer won't, won't hurt anything. Yes. Um, these are amazing. And I'm just, I'm excited there's a product like this out. So go no, to GetRoman.com slash Broettes. Get uh, ten dollars off and free do two day shipping. Um, yeah, that's all we got. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm now I'm again. now it's stuck in my. I head. told you, like We're literally, have to play I was getting ready, doing makeup and singing that. I was like, damn, what is wrong with me? If like I have anyone watching me, my FBI agent who's just like constantly like creeping on me, yeah, being like, really. Like boner alert stuck boner in your head? Boner alert, bro. Fucking weirdo. Do you ever think that sometimes? That what? That you just have someone watching you? Um, no. Is that a weird thing to feel? Um. Like, whether it's like. No, I don't. No? Mm-mm. You don't? I always think like my phone and my computer and everything's listening to me, but I don't that, know if some someone's watching. There are some times where I'll be like, why do I feel like there's someone creeping outside? Is there? No, but is there a possibility that there could be? But I only think these things when Chris is gone and out of town. Yeah, honestly. Oh, I definitely. Right? I have the weirdest thoughts when Ross is gone. Like, I told you this. Like, I have this tree outside that these lights are on a timer and they turn. Oh. On, it's like all like Christmas lights throughout a tree. Yeah, oh, cute. You know, very Mumford and Sons. Yes. But anyways, it's on a timer, so it turns on at like eleven. I didn't know what the timer was. We had just moved in, and uh, they turn on. It turned on. And I was Did you like, think it was um, one of the uh, sensor lights where. No, it- I thought I knew it was those lights that oh. turned on. But I was just like someone it's over there. They've turned on the lights so so they could see it. like you just get the weirdest like yes. what what? And then I called Ross and he was like, OK, so let's walk through this. So you think somebody went over to the little Christmas lights on the tree. Yeah. decided to turn those on just to get your attention, attention. and then go around the front I, you know and once you talk I've it through then you're like okay no like but you know I read books like about the Night Stalker and uh, Golden State Killer and mm-hmm. all these things where they like the weirdest shit where they like get into your house move pictures around get a lay of the land they keep coming in so that they they give your dog meat so that they like them and yeah. like pounce on you that way right yeah so I'm like I mean, it's not out of the question yeah well the, just recently so chris has gone and he's in this course and 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 he doesn't even have a cell phone on him yeah like, you know i mean the course gives him some phone and he can only talk for like five minutes yeah at like one in the morning right and so hey big dogs i'm man in the house yeah and so like while i love my dogs and they're kind of like they'll bark at noise if it's like sketchy yeah they're not gonna attack anyone no you know or like I mean? really let you know yeah correct so all of a sudden i hear a fire alarm going off but it was the fire alarm battery like beep you know this goes off every Got so it. often beep. Yeah, yeah yeah so i was like damn okay i thought chris just changed one right but i thought he like changed it i, th- I thought it was more near the front stairs so i go to the one of the back rooms and i look up and i'm like there is a um fire alarm hanging down but okay. that's not the one that's beeping. There's another one beeping. Right. And for some reason, the doors are closed back there. And I don't remember closing them. I was just like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I go to my room. 
there's a shotgun and we have the uh m what does he have i don't know he doesn't have the nine he basically he has assault rifle <laughs> yeah <laughs> near the bed yeah and uh i just grabbed that with the scope and everything on it. It has like the little tripod and whatever else. And I just go clear the room. Like I'm like, you know, you see the shower curtain that. back. Yeah. yeah, I was yeah. Like, what the fuck? Okay. Like I look, and I'm like, there's no one in Gracie's room. Yeah. What is going on here? I was like, why is that hanging down? Yeah. It's like Chris didn't change that one. Do you know what I mean? But I got, I would never even probably bat an eye to it or care if Chris was home for but sure. Because I'm alone. I'm yeah. like, whoa, yeah. someone in here and then realizing like shit i left the garage door open like the yeah, big garage yeah, yeah. door the yeah. other doors open yeah Maybe someone could have snuck in while i was fulfilling orders i know like, but your mind does that where you're like of course someone's did. gonna break in take out the fire alarm <laughs> let it hang down it makes no fucking and sense and then like go like of course and your mind is just like of course i know i know so anyways I mean, I kind of did. I will be honest. I kind of, I was, I kind of felt pretty badass because obviously I took it off safe and I had it on fire. That's what because I'm obviously you need to use it right away if you're yeah. going to. And I just, you know, finger off. Like I know how to handle yeah, a yeah, weapon. Yeah. Luckily, so I was kind of like, and then I like put it on safe and I put the fire alarm back and I was kind of like, okay. And if, for a minute there, I was like, if they're watching me, I hope that they're scared now, <laughs> right? Like, damn that chick, damn that chick can hold her own. Like, hey fuck? guy, you guys, whoever get the fuck you out of are, here. Yeah. let's go. She's yeah. gonna, like she knows how to use a gun yeah but in reality i was kind of like well i mean at least i know i'm self-sufficient yeah i don't probably i don't ever want i don't want to shoot anyone but if i had to i guess i'd feel comfortable about it yeah and then i put it back and then i was like oh, and then of course like my inner woman came out like oh is it on safe is it care who oh, careful like and yeah. i was just carrying yeah. it around yeah i'm fucking weird and man. i live across the street from a cop like do the you cop is the cop car is in the driveway all the time like yeah that's just never gonna fucking happen. We have a safe neighborhood. We have what yeah. eight, ten houses and a cul-de-sac, and like everyone knows each other. And I guarantee, if they heard anything, we yeah, you'd be people fine. come running. But it's just but like it's your mind, right? It's your mind. It just gets to you. Goes so, crazy. I mean, if you guys don't know now, you're. I mean, you're gonna know. You're gonna know. Jesse's leaving. I'm leaving Little Wilmington. Not the show. No, not the, the show. No, will no, not the show will continue. Yeah. Show will continue every the show twice will a week. Go on. The show will go on. Um, yeah, I'm leaving. We're moving, moving the operation to Austin, Texas. Um, That's a such a good move, though. It's a really good the move, podcast. but um, it's hard for a couple reasons. Yeah. One, we're in the middle of a pandemic. I don't even know how it's going to work. Yeah. I have two kids, uh, one of which was like, you know, has a bunch of friends in the neighborhood and... Um, I have a bunch of friends here and it's going to be really hard. You've been here for a bit. So you're uprooting. I've been here for a bit. So I've been here for six years and you know, your life, I'm uprooting my life and, and like everything, everything you know. that's happened. I'm actually, I hate to say this. Like, I'm just like, uh, the, gu- the goodbye tour is like getting to me mm. a little bit. Cause it's like, I've told people. And then there's people in your neighborhood. I've told everyone that I've like made close enough friends with in, you know, yeah. in Wilmington that like, hey, just, you know, like I'm leaving, like I have to do it. I'm not super excited, but it is, you know, it is for work, whatever. And then there's the inevitable, like we have to like hang, hang before you go. And then that last hang and the like uh, the f- finalization of it, like I'm the kind of person that would want to leave in the middle of the night and be like, I'll be back. And when I come back, I'll you know we'll get together and we'll have drinks you know because this part for me is really hard yeah it's really hard to like know that you're leaving know that it's your last time hanging out Mm -hmm. or like whatever yeah you can travel and you do so like you definitely will be coming out there there are other people that i know you say you're going to but it never happens and then you wonder if that's gonna fall off but you know it's never going to fall yeah correct because i have kids too and they have kids and family and you know like when in the world are those stars gonna ever align like it sounds like a great idea sounds great and you go girls trip and we're gonna be there and we're gonna plan it and like it will 100% never happen. I know that now. I used to think that it would, but it does not. Um, like, just when you think you're going to go, a kid will get sick or a husband has to work or whatever it is, and you'll it'll never happen. Yeah. There are a couple women that actually have it like that. 
I don't know how they do. Yeah. They even have young kids and I see them in the Caymans with their friends. Good for them. Good for them. They can, I don't yeah, have it like they that. Worked it out. But they worked it out. They set their boundaries and their fucking do's and don'ts in the very beginning. Yeah. And we're like, I'm going to have these kids. But once a fucking year, I'm going out with all my fucking high school college friends. I mean, and I you're feel not going like, to say shit. I feel like anyone deserves that, though. You know Absolutely. I mean? It's just it's sometimes it's hard. just making it possible or if you have the funds or and like, money too. You're that's like, what I'm saying. Like, are we really spending money for mom to go get drunk with her friends? Yeah. Yeah. It's called a mental it's health vacation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's it's what it is. It's me taking care of my fucking self. That's what we're doing here. Right. Right. Well, that's I think that's one reason why I'm not like incredibly sad. Yeah. Due to the fact that you and I will still be talking. We're we'll still be talk- doing our two episodes a week. Exactly. I'll be coming down there probably for like a week or something at a time. Yeah. So I'm sure by the time I'm like leaving, we're both going to be like, good, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, right? right. Well, we'll just have alcohol poisoning. That's we'll all. Say, yeah. But th- we'll other than that. Like, we'll both be like, we can't for our own help. I can't we stay can't, here any we fucking can't longer. Be here. We're going to go out in Austin every night. God, Please. I'm so fucking excited. But, yeah. but I will say that there is a little, it's bittersweet, right? Even though I do live two hours away, yeah, I've gotten immune to the fact of knowing that I was going to see you at least once a week, twice yeah, a week, or exactly. at least talking to you and kind of knowing, you know, how it's like more comfortable when you know someone's close within like yes. kind of arm's reach. Like, yes. oh, I mean, if anything, I can just come out there for the yeah, night. Yeah, anything see her. happens, just drive out. And like, there yeah. was a lot of times when we were like fighting with our husbands or something, oh, come God. out, go get an Airbnb, we'll do some shows, we'll go out when we were allowed to go out. We're I can't to. remember and that when was that was so great. Yeah. Having so, like even the time where we even got to know each other, right? Yeah. We were doing podcasts and we kind of did. I don't even know how many we did already at that point, but we we're like, oh you and I need to talk maybe more off air, even yeah. though it felt like we were just we were getting we to were know clicking each other anyway on air. Yeah, but man, that was like at the Mexican restaurant. I know, we and then won. that was Trump pants. We're not gonna say it because like, I won't say it, but yeah, Trump pants. And so that yeah. was, but that was still such a fun. It was fun, dude. And we talked and talked and talked all night in your car. Do you remember that? Yeah. And I think we were like just even parked. In the we were of the literally street. in the middle of the street, but Wilmington. Sorry, it's so <laughs> slow. You were we like, literally just, had one car. You were like, go around. I'm go around. Go, just around. go around. We're like, just talking. Obviously, we're sitting here. It was um, great. It was so fun. And so I look forward to those moments that we'll have together yeah. in Texas. I will say, I post it. Um, the little go away thing that we have for tonight on the Broettes like private page, mm-hmm. and already like people don't know where you're moving to because I don't right. think I I also don't think I think ninety percent of that page does not listen to the podcast, which is kind of funny. Yeah, uh, but they were like, oh, if you guys do it in Texas, and I'm like, funny story, weird that you say that, but it seems like so many people are out in Texas. Yeah, so it's like a the lot biggest amount. Or the largest amount of drinking, like drinking bros per capita, basically. I can see that. Yeah. Um, And in Austin specifically. So that's like our biggest chapter, if you will, whatever you want to call it. But um, one of my friends lives in Texas and she was like, they're probably moving somewhere cool like Austin or something. And I was like, yes. And she was like, oh my God, it's so amazing there. So that's at least one good thing to look forward to. Like, totally. I'm pretty jealous. I want to live in Texas myself. Yeah, but you're going to. I'm, I am believing that. We are gonna going manifest to manifest it. We will. We're going to get based over If you over want there. to, if Chris wants to, and eventually, someday, no matter. The biggest thing is I, I'm going to be like, listen, if you can't get based over there in two years, less than, then just retire. Just retire. Let's go. You know what I mean? Because the time will be up anyway. Yeah. It's like, let's go. Listen, I and that's what I'm going to use against him. Not against him, but I'm going to use it as like a good selling point. Sure. Like, okay. So I moved out to North Carolina for you and I did not want to. So mm-hmm. now it's time for you to move to Texas. Now it's my turn. Me. That's how that's how relationships right? work. You're going to do this for a while and I'm going to remember every little thing. And then when it's my turn, I'm going to tell you. I'm gonna it's my it turn. And I'm going to say, I did this and now it's my turn. I'm going to. That's marriage. Yeah. And that is marriage. But um, but I've heard I, nothing but great things so far about Texas. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, the only thing I'm, wor- I'm a little worried that like, you know, if like your husband's your only friend mm. and then you're like fighting your only friend out there, not only friend, yeah, but, I know, like, but out there yep. and like you're fighting and there's like no one you can just like grab a drink with and be like, eh, well, like, I know or you literally have to just like sit in the house with him and be like, what the fuck? But well, how far away do, I mean, I guess the black rifle and all those guys are pretty far down south from you all um i think there's heather's s- down there yeah so heather texted me and was like are you moving to texas yeah. i was like yeah yes. girl like can we hang no she well. was like yeah she was like but then yeah again, dude for sure that would be like you and i trying to hang when i'm in you know two hours away exactly so it's like where do we meet up like where i i don't know the logistics of that might be harder but i think 
when people come visit or if like anyone comes to Austin, I think I'd be able to see them. And it's one of those places I used to live in Vegas where like people come through. That's what I mean. They always have like a trip there or there's a concert there or something. So people are always coming through. Yeah. Whereas Wilmington, it was really hard to get like even oh my, my best God. friends yeah. from back in like California or like they're, you know, they're all over the country now. But like to get them to actually come to Wilmington, it was a hard, hard sell. I didn't even know there was a... A airport in Wilmington until right? I looked. I was like, see. dude, the airport is 15 minutes away. Like, it, yeah, it's super small though. Yeah. So when yeah. you think about connecting flights and how For expensive sure. that is, because that's even where I'm at. Right. Right. So then it's like, okay, well, do we fly into Raleigh and then drive, drive down like, the two hours or whatever? Correct. Yeah. So it, it's definitely it's a hard sell. It's a hard sell to get people to come through to get people to visit. So now Austin will be the destination. Yeah, and people you know? will be coming through, and I think it'll be. I think it'll be good, but it's it taken will. me a second to even get to that point, and I'm not even sure that I'm there yet. That makes sense. But and that's well, doesn't Renee Rlo live yeah. around there? Yeah, she's in Austin. She's Perfect. great. She's excited. I know you guys have hung out before. Didn't she? Didn't she go to the uh, Post Malone? Post Malone, dude. Yeah. Doesn't Post Malone? Does he? No, he's from Texas. He's from but Texas. He lives in Utah. Yeah, but okay. he lives in Utah now. But um. You know Xander, yeah, is like good friends with him. So Xander's out there. He's out there. You know him and Renee. Oh, I love. How did you Xander? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> they always do. Oops. They always do this shit where they're like posting pictures of each other. Of they're both in the same place taking the same picture, but they never like get together in the picture or say that they're with each other. Oh. But it'll be like, oh, tacos at blah blah blah. Love, love Taco Tuesday. And then on his Instagram, he'll be like, so excited to be at Taco Tuesday. Well, but <laughs> you guys are together you again. Are together again. Like, please. Just- my sister just apparently did that recently. I guess she's going through my younger sister is going through something right now. And so I called my other sister and I was yeah. like, hey, is she OK? Yeah. And she goes, well, I think she's back with her ex. And I go, how did you know? How do you know? And she's like, well, that's a definite back. They with didn't the come out thing. and yeah. say it. But she was like, hey, like I'm shopping around and she showed the back of this guy and it looked like her ex. And then he posted a Snapchat that he was at the same store at the same time. I'm like, exactly. It's the classic like, <laughs> come on, we're together. When we're learning, learning. Like, what are you fucking embarrassed about? You're both are awesome. You're both fucking cool. Like, yeah. You know Please. what, though? I, I respect this. There's some people out there. I don't do that, it either. Well, there's some people out there who just don't even like remotely mentioning anything about their relationship or if they're in one online because they don't want anyone to get involved. And I don't fucking blame them for a second. No, I get that. And right? I think that's both of their things. Like, they both have. I am sure that's what it is. And, like, professional. I don't even know what yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, what I can imagine. Because when you think about relationships, the more people that you talk to about your relationship, the more problems I feel like sometimes you introduce, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because you get a lot of people talking Mm -hmm. about things. You can't always update them on, so let's say you vent to an acquaintance. Sure. About a bad situation that happened between you and your boyfriend or you and your spouse or whatever. All of a sudden now, that acquaintance who might not even know you guys that well has this very negative picture of your relationship or your spouse. Yeah in that situation and if you can't update them or if they're not understanding and empathetic then all of a sudden like they're now creating a fucking story to everyone else right and then it's just so i've that's one thing i've noticed which is why i've kept my relationship off social media is because i'm like i don't need people no and i into my fucking business yeah because relationships already are work and they have problems why invite more that's why i have select few people that i talk to about relationship stuff like yeah. deep deep stuff yeah right and then we can talk just like you and i do we talk about like surface not surface things but we talk about general problems or yeah. things that we have that you like, guys oh, can yeah, probably relate that. to that like right. most women deal with that you whatever yeah, 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 yeah but at the same time just because we say like hey this happened once doesn't mean like things are bad all the time yeah yeah and yeah yeah i think that's where selecting oh, that's the right the classic right selecting the right people <laughs> as your friends to talk to you about your relationship is so important because if you have that friend who's going to remember every single bad piece of information and never take in the good and they're always holding shit over your head and think like it's just like oh we can't talk anymore 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. You have to have someone who's empathetic. And I like, always, um, I shy away from, I remember with my, I learned this from my brother because he was with this girl mm -hmm. and they would always break up and get back together and break up and get back together. And I was the one that was like, uh, you know, that fucking bitch. All right. But, should, but and then he would get back together with her. Mm not tell me or like do you know what i yeah. mean and then i'm the fucking bitch that called your now wife oh yeah a bitch <laughs> do you know what i mean like they had got a divorce because she's a fucking bitch but yeah. she he's with a new one that's great yeah and even if they fought and he was like this fucking bitch i know now to be like hey you know you, you've you're obviously to get whatever yeah. i'll listen but i won't go down the road of like yeah fuck you, Correct. Fucking bitch because it's you guys, hard, yeah. nine times out of ten, they're going to get back together at least for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to be the friend that called her a bitch. And they won't tell you. And they'll do the little fake Instagram things of yep. them in the same place. You know what? I feel like the people that I can talk to, particularly sometimes about relationships or, or deeper problems, is the people who know me well enough. Right? Like, including mm -hmm. my parents. Yeah. So my parents, like, obviously, they, they know me better than anyone sure so when i talk to him about them with certain situations or relationship problems it's never like well tiffany you are like this but there's a lot more understanding like yeah yeah yeah. you know what i mean mm -hmm. like maybe yeah. sometimes they know they're like well and if that the maybe guy, i'm a little bit angry sure or maybe i probably didn't say something as sweetly and like yes he was you know maybe responded like a dick but then so they then they can give you real advice the innocent yes right or but it's not also it's never an attack but it's also like, hey, I understand where you're coming from. I had to learn this or I had to do this. So I guess that's one thing that I had to learn, too, because young when I was younger, me would be like, yeah, fuck that dude. Fuck that, that, that. Mm -hmm. Unless they were really a shit bag. Right. Oh, then they for deserve sure. that. For sure. But for the most part, I'd be like, yeah. And then now that I've gotten older, I realize it's more like, girl, I feel you. Right. It, right. That's some more common ground here. Instead of bashing. Yes. Could you imagine if you're talking to me about Ross and I was like, fuck that dude, yeah, blah, 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 blah. And you'd be bitch. like, whoa, I yeah. don't want to talk to you anymore. But instead exactly. if I was like, Jesse, I get it. Crystal, get same it. thing. Been like there. This. And yeah. then we can relate. And that's and more um, beneficial that is than so, the other. Oh, absolutely. Well, that's positive to me. Right. Right. Instead of the bashing yeah. thing. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes bashing sessions, not just for, not for your spouse. Sometimes it feels good. If they broke up with you or something. And you, yes. It's good to hear your friend be like, I never fucking liked him anyways. He's a piece of shit. Correct. But it doesn't feel good when you get back together with him. <laughs> and you're like, oh, she never liked him. She feels like he's a piece of shit. Damn it. I mean, that's the thing too. I, there has been times, even so with my ex-husband, when we divorced, uh, a lot of guys came out of the woodwork all of a sudden and were like, dude, sure. I never fucking linked him. He was a piece of shit. And sure. then part of me was like, well, why didn't you say anything? Right? I can't, though. But then on the whole other spectrum, I thought to myself, okay, well, if you did say something, how would I, who, how would I have taken it? Would you I have been have like, fuck you? At them. Yeah. Right? Would it have like ruined our friendship? Would I believe them? Would it have made them look like a bad guy? Would it have caused issues between them and my ex? Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, so sometimes yeah, yeah. people are always put into a rock and a hard place. That's true. So when it comes so, to that shit. Don't call them the real, you know, I may be divorced if they're actually divorced is a time. But until they actually get the paperwork signed, hold off on calling them a dumb bitch that you <laughs> never liked because it will come back to bite you in the ass when they reconcile. <laughs> yeah. um, but but we are having a get together. Like we a, are. I don't even know how many people are coming, which I don't. It could be fun because it's be us, us, which by the care. way, let's be real. We're going to have said our, to Ross, a fucking, like, how many people are coming? I was like, it doesn't matter. Cause how many drink. times have we gone out and had a fucking blast? Just us. We're the only ones on the dance floor. And Danny, well, Danny's coming, Danny's coming, She'll you know? And so like, that's really all that matters. And Dan's brother's here. And so, again, but it's going to be fun. We're going to have a good time. We're going to make memories. Yeah. Hopefully, I'm excited. Hopefully we don't wake up tomorrow morning and be like, oh, my God, what do we say and do? I know. Well, we're doing a show, so we'll talk all about it. True. So you guys will get um, – we're going to do some shows – while Jesse's still here. Yeah. That you guys will be getting later on. So you guys will definitely get a drunk show. Yeah. So tonight <laughs> I had this idea. You guys will Such hear a great it, idea. I'm very proud of you. Me and Tiffany are going to be sitting in our studio getting drunk. And we're going to invite uh, people that come to the party to get drunk bitch advice from us. Uh -huh. Because who doesn't love that? Right. Yeah. Who I doesn't mean, love two drunk bitches telling you that you're gorgeous and you're beautiful and you deserve so much just better like it is literally all gloves are off. Everything's but on the we table. We want some guys to come in here. It's going to be a lot of guys, but we want yeah. guys to come in here. We'll give you advice. We'll shoot you straight, as you know. Um, <laughs> and uh, I think we're going to have some fun and we'll 
that show is going to be the next one coming out. Yeah. It'll be kind of a live free for all nonsense, but it'll feel like you guys were here. I hope that? so. And by the way, if you guys are listening to that one, maybe just watch it, listen to it at home. Sure. Right? Grab some wine, mm, grab some booze, yeah. then join in. It's probably going to be a lot more fun that way. Yeah, exactly. Because sometimes listening to drunk people super sober in a car, you're like, Ugh. Very annoying. Very annoying. I hear you. And I guarantee my words are going to be way worse. Yeah, so... <laughs> We don't know the we don't know the name of the reviewer, but maybe not listen to that one. Okay, <laughs> if it bothers you, I'm going to be saying like a bunch, yeah, and slurring my words probably. But um, we're excited, and yeah. um, it's all going to be good. And I'm going to I'll probably see you more than It'll anyone else. It'll so be good. I'm I, excited about that. I'm excited for your move. While I understand it's the whole process is super bittersweet, um, it is. We'll try and make we're, it exciting. We, as in me and the whole Broette community and everyone listening, is here for you. And if you ever want to vent and just talk to us about it, we're here. Because we get that. it. I feel like so many of us get it. You yeah. know what I mean? Love it. And thank uh, God. Yeah. So, well, thank you guys for enduring the beginning of that. I know that I shared a lot. That was really heavy. I think it was really good. Um, thank you. Thank you for the support. I think it was good. I appreciate that. I think everybody I was really feels, nervous to talk um, about it. I was shaking. Yeah. By the way. But I think everyone feels the breakthrough. Like it feels a little bit like a breakthrough. I feel it better. It feels like now you can um, move forward I feel from like there. something was heavy on my heart Monday. Yeah. And, and it was peaking out a little mm-hmm. bit. And um, thankfully, we got to just break so, through. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you. I hope you, and if anything, just open up your hearts to it and just be, that's all we can ask is to be understanding of it. Right? Yeah. And uh, shit. Well, I guess stay tuned for the next one, guys, because oh. it's going to be a shit show. Wait yeah. a second. What? We got to end this. Oh. Oh, God. We got to end this on the best term ever. Wow. I'm like hitting the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Bye. Bye. Yeah, you've been watching every move and plotting your next move on every girl I'm moving on. Yeah, don't y'all better things to do. Yeah, go buy some fucking shoes. Yeah, you're irritating. Irritating. You're saying.